Deep beneath the bustling city, hidden in shadows, lay an old forgotten lab. It breathed secrets. Dim lights flickered, dust danced in the stale air, and the stench of formaldehyde bit at the nostrils. It was a place of forbidden knowledge, a place where life and death played a dangerous game. Jonathan Crane, a young scientist with eyes that burned with ambition, surveyed his domain. His lab was a testament to his genius and his folly. He was on the verge of achieving what man had always desired, conquering death itself. Jonathan ran a hand through his sleep-deprived hair, his gaze falling upon a syringe filled with an eerie luminescent green liquid. This was it, the Lazarus formula, the key to reversing death's cold embrace. Years of relentless research, countless failed experiments. He had sacrificed everything. His sanity wavered on the edge of obsession. The Lazarus formula was his life's work, a concoction so potent, so audacious, it promised to rewrite the laws of nature. It had the power to stimulate cellular regeneration, to kickstart the heart that had stopped. The ethical implications were staggering, but Jonathan had long pushed those thoughts aside. He was too close now, driven by a thirst for knowledge and a burning desire to cheat death. His hands, usually steady, trembled slightly as he prepared the first test. Tonight, he would defy the natural order. Tonight, he would play God. The air grew thick with anticipation. Jonathan chose a subject, a recently deceased lab rat, its lifeless eyes staring into the void. He injected the Lazarus formula into the creature's still heart. Silence. Then a flicker of movement. The rat's legs twitched, its eyes snapped open, glowing an unnatural green. Success. Jonathan's heart pounded against his ribs, a mixture of exhilaration and terror coursing through him. He had done it. He had brought the dead back to life. But as the rat staggered to its feet, its movements jerky and unnatural, a chilling thought crept into Jonathan's mind. What had he unleashed? Word of Jonathan's success spread like wildfire, attracting the attention of those who had lost and longed to regain. Among them was a grieving widower, clutching a faded photograph of his departed wife. A mother, desperate to hold her stillborn child. Their pleas were impossible to ignore. Jonathan hesitated. He had resurrected a rat, yes, but a human being? The ethical implications now hit him with full force, a tidal wave of fear and uncertainty. But the pleas were too strong, the lure of playing God too intoxicating. Jonathan agreed to bring their loved ones back. The reanimated souls were shadows of their former selves. Their eyes held a hollow, distant look. They moved with an unsettling jerkiness. They were alive, yes, but were they truly living, or were they merely existing, trapped between two worlds? The line between life and death blurred, and Jonathan found himself lost in the haze. The reanimated yearned for their old lives, their memories fragmented and distorted. They were strangers in their own bodies. The world they woke up to was cold, unfamiliar. The weight of his actions pressed down on Jonathan. The lab, once a sanctuary, now felt like a prison. The line between life and death, once clear, had dissolved into a murky abyss. The resurrected souls were not the people they once were. Their existence was a tortured mockery of life. Jonathan realized with a growing sense of dread that he had not conquered death, but corrupted it. Jonathan was in too deep. He had opened Pandora's box, and there was no closing it. The curse of the living dead had been unleashed. 